Hello everyone, here in this lecture I am briefing about the ectopic pregnancy. So in this part we will discuss what is this condition and what all risk factors are there that aggravate the chance of ectopic. So what is ectopic pregnancy? When the fertilized zygote is not implanted in normal endometrial uterine cavity and it just implanted outside the cavity or somewhere else then this is to be called as ectopic pregnancy. So we know that in normal pregnancy the fertilized ova is uh, usually the fertilization took place in the ampullary part of tube and from there it travel along the tube and enter in the cavity uterine cavity where it gets embedded in the endometrial lining and then it grows yes but here what happened this whole process doesn't take place and the implantation took place somewhere else so there are various sites of implantation in that topic and out of them 95 percent condition the fertilized zygote is implanted in tube itself it means the philippine tube so uh, when it lodged in or implanted or embedded in the tube then it is to be called as tubal pregnancy so it is most common type in ectopic where the fertilized ova is implanted in the tube itself but again in tube there are four parts the largest widest part is the ampullary part which is the most common site in tube itself and then next common one is the isthmus and then is the fimbrial part and the last where the least chance is there for the ectopic is the interstitial part the part of the tube that lies within the wall of uterus yes that is the narrowest part okay so these are the four basic part where the implantation took place in the tubal pregnancy and the most common one is the ampulla yes so uh, these are the condition where 95 percent chances are there to be implanted there but in least five percent condition uh, the fertilized zygote can be implanted in the cervical region it can be implanted in the previous uterine scar suppose if the woman had previous cesarean section so on that scar uh, the fertilized ova the zygote can be implanted there it can be implanted in the ovaries or it can goes in the peritoneal cavity also so uh, directly fertilized ova travel in the abdominal cavity it means the primary abdominal pregnancy chances are also less comparative to that is the secondary abdominal pregnancy is quite common where firstly the fertilized ova is implanted in the tube or the ovary and from there it moves and implant in the abdominal cavity that is secondary abdominal pregnancy is uh, common in comparison to the primary abdominal pregnancy and uh, cornual pregnancy can be happen it means uh, if the woman have any congenital uterine anomaly where the rudimentary horn is there extra lobe or extra part is there in the uterus there the pregnancy could be happen there the fertilized ova can be implanted there so that is called cornual pregnancy so the cornual pregnancy the cervical the uh, previous season scar pregnancy ovarian peritoneal these all pregnancy happens in only five percent condition the most one is the the most common one is the tubal pregnancy so what all risk factors are there uh, that increases the chance of ectopic so out of them the most common cause is the PID pelvic inflammatory disease infection in the pelvic region because of any bacteria uh, that could be because of any sexually transmitted diseases like gonorrhea chlamydia trochomatis so these are the common reasons the infection that can ascend through the vagina and travel along the tube and damage the tubal structure so as we know once the tube get disturbed because how the normally over transported along the tube there are the uh, different mechanism like one is the lining of the tube is made up of cilia inner lining is made up of cilia 
ciliated columnar lining. So that cilia allows the motility of zygote. Okay, and there is also a peristaltic muscular movement of the tube. So combinedly, they all allow the fertilized zygote to move along the tube and uh, enter in the cavity. But when it gets disturbed or damaged by any scar, by any surgery previously, then it could not be happened, and the fertilized zygote remained there itself. Okay. So these infection like self-angitis, the infection in the fallopian tube, the pelvic inflammatory diseases, which is most commonly caused by sexually transmitted diseases. So this all combined infection causes uh, the disturbance in the anatomy, the structural anatomy of the tube. Thereby the motility get disturbed and the fertilized zygote remain there itself. And suppose if the woman had previous tubal reconstructive surgery where the tube gets repaired uh, to improve the fert fertility so uh, if any surgery or any handling is there previously on the tube then again the surgery or the handling can cause the fibrosis or the scar and that scar again causes decrease the motility and once the motility get decreases the fertilized ova or the zygote cannot be traveled along the tube. Okay, so previous tubal surgery can also decrease the uh, motility and causes ectopic tubal pregnancy. And uh, if any contraceptive failure happens, like uh, the most common failure in the contraception is the sterilization procedure, that is the tubectomy. But these all contraception are very good enough because actually they are made to prevent pregnancy. But suppose if they get fail like the tubectomy where we ligate the tube or we can apply the clips or uh, tie the tube by rings. So if it gets slip off, if it releases the clips then there is a chance that the tubal ectopic could be happen and very less chance could be happen with the failure of uh, IUD progesterone devices and the copper T devices or oral contraceptive pills also fail sometime and that can lead to ectopic pregnancy. But the contraceptions are usually taken to prevent pregnancy. So altogether the pregnancy rate usually decreases but once the failure happens, the pregnancy occur on the top of these all contraceptive method, then the chance of ectopic will be more. Okay. And if the woman is having self-angitis, isthmica nodosum, it means there is any diverticulum in the tube uh, that is uh, out pouching from epithelial to the muscular lining, then also the structural defect would be there that will not allow the fertilized zygote to move along the tube. Okay, so if the diverticulum or any structural anomaly is there in the tube, that also can cause ectopic pregnancy. And most importantly, if the woman is having history of previous uh, ectopic pregnancy or the history of tubal surgery, then the chance of ectopic pregnancy in subse subsequent pregnancy will be more and more. Okay, so previous history also increases the chance of ectopic. And if she is infertile and taking the treatment like IVF, ET, embryo transfer, then also the chances of embryo to be implanted in the tube will be more. So these are the risk factors that can cause ectopic, but the most common cause is the PID, pelvic inflammatory diseases. The infection that ascends from downward and goes in the tube and can damage the tube, tubular structure. So as the implantation took place in the tube, then what happens? So as the blastocysts get attached to the epithelial lining, there is no submucosal lining. So once it's attached to the epithelial, uh, the trophoblastic cells embed or get buried into the muscularis layer directly, where slight level of hypertrophy and hyperplasia took place under the effect of uh, pregnancy. So once it embedded in the muscular layer, blood vessels are also engorged and uh, the blood is entered 
into this lining and surround this whole structure so initially the decidua the uterine endometrial lining is also prepared as the hcg is produced by trophoblastic cell but once the structure uh, reaches at its peak the growth take it peak because it is not allowing that much space to grow because tube is narrower okay so uh, once it reaches at peak then thereafter the production of hcg is also decreases and as it happens the progesterone will no more okay and no more progesterone may causes sludging of the decidual lining okay so uterine bleeding could be there or it can be cause decidual casting where the whole decidua comes out okay the whole decidua comes out uh, as in pouch like structure so it could be because of the decrease in amount of progesterone level as the trophoblast will no more be able to enter in the endometrial lining so what happens after that what is the fate and outcome of this type of pregnancy uh, if it is an ampullary part then it takes 8 weeks to continue pregnancy will not be interrupted and it will continue approximately for 8 weeks but if it is an isthmus part which is narrow then the pregnancy won't be continue after 6 weeks it start interrupting okay but suppose if the implantation took place in the interstitial part where uh, the the structure is usually the mass is supported by underlying musculature layer of uterus then this pregnancy usually continues quite longer comparative to the rest of the structures okay so in the isthmus part the early interruption took place and as the muscular and the serosal lining of the tube get stretch it cause pain in the abdomen as well okay Because if the implantation took place in the ampullary part or in femoral line then most of the time the whole structure can be released out through the tubal abortion it means the whole thing comes out through the abdominal ostium that is the end of femoral part and from there it can enter into the peritoneal cavity but suppose if it is in isthmus part then the more chance of tubal rupture would be there it means the wall get stretched thin and finally the tube get ruptured and finally the product of conception comes out in the peritoneal cavity itself and that is very dangerous fate the outcome because it can cause life threatening condition to a woman because this is the condition where mortality and morbidity rate would be increase with the sex topic pregnancy so, so this is the mode of termination or the fate that is tubal rupture could be there to get ruptured and the product of conception release in the peritoneal cavity or tubal abortion could be there so the whole conceptus or the product of conception releases in the peritoneal cavity through the opening so here in this lecture we have discussed what is this condition and what all risk factors are there and what all common sites are there for implantation in ectopic pregnancy and in next part we'll discuss what is the clinical significance what all signs and symptoms the woman may have with this ectopic and what all diagnostic evaluations are there through which we can diagnose this condition as early as possible thank you